Hello, this is David with Santan Solar, your one-stop shop for all your solar needs. And today we're going to be talking about an array configuration tips, some things to consider. A lot of people will come out here, they'll, they'll buy all their stuff, they'll get their panels, they'll get their charge controllers, and inverters and wires and cables and everything. Numbers look good, everything works out. But there's a few considerations you have to work into that if you haven't already done so. And that is temperature. Be aware that when temperatures change, so does the efficiency of your panels. So that means that uh, uh, depending where you're at, if they have a, a warmer days, they're bright, sunny, warm days, they get hot. Remember, hotter temperatures makes the panels produce less. Now, there is a trade-off for that. As you know, that if you live in an area where it's uh, summers, it get very warm, but you have a lot of daylight times. So there's a trade-off. That means the more daylight that you have, more hours of daylight, it'll produce even more. Even though the temperatures might help, re might reduce some of that power efficiency, the longer daylight hours will help compensate for that. In some places, that's what happens a lot of times, especially out here. We're out here in, in sunny Gilbert, Arizona. So uh, during our summers are pretty hot. So that means the panels won't produce as efficiently, but we do get lots of days of sunshine. Now, when you start thinking about colder temperatures, like up north or someplace that is a lot more chillier, higher altitudes generally have a lot colder temperatures during the winter. Winter time meaning that you're going to be producing things like at around 40 degrees or so, uh, temperature-wise is where it's going to be at, you have to consider that when panels do get colder, they produce more. However, during the winter times, you get fewer daylight hours. That means that um, you don't have as much time for the, uh, the solar panels to accumulate uh, those daylight hours. However, because they're producing higher efficiency, because of the cold temperatures, again, you have a little bit of a trade-off. So in colder temperatures, in some circumstances, uh, solar panels can thrive. Uh, for that uh, for that time in the winter because it'll produce more power. So why is this important? Well, first of all, you want to make sure that when you are accumulating your um, hybrid inverter or you're going to be using modular systems like you're going to have your own charge controller, inverter, battery bank, uh, and whatnot, and you want to, you know, modular, put that together. The, the key things is to keep your voltages and amps within specs of those devices. That means that your charge controllers or hybrid uh, inverters themselves, they have a specific guidelines. You always want to refer to that. Always stay within their max voltage and their max amps. Knowing that, you have to consider those temperature variations, as I discussed earlier, to show you that there is going to be a change. So you've got to factor those things in. So when you have a temperature or you have a, a temperature change that you don't know about or it's going to be cold and you're not sure about it, you want to factor those in before you put your array together. That'll give you a good head start as to what size of your charge controller or inverter that you're going to need. Because remember, as things get hot, they'll decrease. So you might increase the voltage output by putting more panels and what have you for your, for your inverter. But as it gets colder, that will go up. Are you set for that? Is your inverter uh, going to go over its maximum? Going over its maximum is not recommended for by, by mostly all of the inverter and uh, charge controller manufacturers. So keep that in mind when you do that. And we'll go into a little more discussion as to why that is so important when it comes to choosing your devices. When configuring your solar array, uh, what you want to do is to make sure that when you are doing that, your, your current and your voltages are going to be in line with the devices that you have. And how do you do that is to, first of all, if you're using like a charge controller, you want to make sure that you are following the guidelines of your charge controller. You do have a maximum voltage and they got a minimum voltage. Right. This particular charge controller is about 100 volts with a 50 amp maximum. This one can be used on 12 or 24 volt systems. So you make sure you're hooked up, your battery is hooked up to a 12 or 24 volt battery. Now the inputs for the uh, PV should not exceed these two numbers, the 100 volts and the 50 amps. That's important when it comes to uh, uh, checking out the voltages and the amps of your configuration. Remember earlier we talked about how temperature can affect the highs and lows of the performance of a panel. You want to make sure that when you're configuring these, uh, uh, these figures for, for, for output to your charge controller, that you do not exceed these and accommodate, the, accommodate your system for that. So in other words, if it gets really cold, they're going to produce more, more voltages. So make sure you have a little bit of leeway either way when it comes to hooking these up. Because if you start to exceed the maximum voltages or the maximum amps on these devices, you'll just wear them down or they just simply won't work. 
So just make sure you do that. For charge controllers, that's very important. For your hybrids, same thing applies. There's a 24 volt, uh, uh, 2400 uh, K machine. Now this one has its listings right here. It'll tell you what your maximums and minimums are. So you want to make sure you're paying attention just as you did with your charge controller because this is all inclusive. This has the charge controller and inverter built in. It still has maximum minimums and you still need to accommodate for those variances that you're going to have in your charge con in your uh, configuration for your solar panels. It's just as important with these as it is with these. So just make sure you're reading your manual and you're sticking within those parameters and figuring in those percentages like we discussed earlier. And just like your voltage and amperage, you want to make sure that you're also keeping within the wattage limitations. Now, a lot of people will just put wattage in, hopefully the volts and the amps will take care of themselves. But you've got to understand that a lot of these machines and devices do have a wattage uh, a maximum. So you have to kind of play with the numbers a little bit and your panels, whether they be serial or parallel, how you're going to be putting them together is going to determine how these things will perform, like I said earlier. So you have to make sure that your wattage is, is within range of this. It's not overdoing the wattage, that your volts and amps are within range of this. And as we said earlier, you always want to give yourself some cushion for that because of the temperature variance that we discussed earlier. So keep that in mind when putting together a unit that has uh, uh, lots of these variations that you must account for. Okay, the other tip that we want to make sure you understand is in determining your solar array voltage. Remember what I said earlier about your maximums and minimums for your devices. So you want to make sure that when you're putting your arrays together and you're calculating your voltages, are they putting them in serial? Are you going to put them in parallel or a combination of both? This is important when it comes to configuring your system and you want to make sure you're doing it the best for your MPPT calculations that are going to be coming out of here. This is going to do all that heavy lifting of figuring out your voltages for you so that it can, it can output the best possible voltage to your battery. Lastly, the things you want to consider when you have panels out here is like in air environments like such as ours over here, we are uh, in the desert and it gets very dusty, uh, a lot of wind blow, a lot of uh, uh, dust storms happen around here, and of course leaves falling off trees, they can get on top of your panel. So you got to consider those other external factors that can happen to your, your panels, keeping them clean, keeping them dust free, uh, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, the birdies haven't sat on it and made a mess on them or what have you but you'll always uh, want to make sure that they are kept clean, uh, angled properly into the sun as best as you can. Usually there's a, there are radiance angles that you can look up and that'll help you give you the best optimal angle for these guys. Because these guys are going to be temperature sensitive as well, or temperature dependent, as well as angled to the sun. Here, we don't have a big problem with that because we have so much sunshine here in the Southwest. But if you're one of those folks that lives up North or you're in areas where it's a little bit cooler and your days a little shorter, you might want to make sure that you're configured your panels in the right optimum levels and that, of course, snow, rain, and all sorts of debris just doesn't rest on your panels. That can, that can uh, lower your efficiencies, and that way you'll be able to um, uh, keep track of how it's performing by keeping them clean and making sure that they're in good shape. So if you're unsure about your uh, array and its configuration, it's always good to seek help. So if you do, you'd want to contact a professional solar installer or engineer, and they'll be glad to help.